Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals here. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about when do you separate out objects and when do you combine objects? This is a topic we run into quite a lot. So we thought we'd give our perspective on it. You know, what is it like in a production environment and, and like what is the best, best kind of practice for, for working with models, basically. So as a general guideline, this is what we always say is like, if an object is separate in real life, separate it out. That's like, that's like the overall, like, live by that. I mean, and you won't really have any issues. It, it really boils down to that. I guess we could just end the video there. Yeah, that's it. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's incredibly simple. Like, when, when I'm looking around the room right now, I have, I have a bottle. And should the, the cap of the bottle be a separate piece? Well, is it a separate piece in real life? Then, yes. Uh, th this is really the general approach to it. And it seems like people have a really hard time understanding really what does separate in real life mean. Because you, you might have a complex plastic piece and it's composed of like 30 individual pieces. And in this case, you will model all 30 individual pieces. You, you, gotta, you kind of go back to how has this piece been manufactured. If it's, you're talking about some, some string, then you do each string individually because that's how it's done. And it, this might be attached into a knot. But you will still do each piece of string individually. Yeah, and if we look at these two objects, like these two objects are completely identical except for the one fact that one is merged and the other one is not. And then we also have some internal bits on the non-merged one, which are merged in terms of like they're combined, the vertices are combined. So we're, we're really, you have to make that distinction between verts being merged and then combining objects so they're like in the same object container, right? And there's there's never really a use case for this you know right we have this merge thing it's in a collection here you might think that it's easier to just keep everything merged like this oh okay it's like it's like it's been grouped by itself but this is not really a good practice especially not for handing off models to other people or for scene management you'd be way better off just putting this in an empty or in a group this we just want to mention this is completely software agnostic this applies to this is modeling practices it doesn't have to do with blender or, or maya or max or yeah, whatever any software in the world this, this applies to essentially yeah so this might seem like it makes your life easier but in reality this is this is how you should really be doing it like you should like kenning was thinking was saying you think about the manufacturing of how something is made you know maybe maybe this is a cast piece in Iron Man red or something like that. And this insert here, maybe that's like punctured in by a machine or maybe this is milled out. Whereas if this had been a screw, you know, this piece here wouldn't be combined on a vertex level. You would model the screw separately and then you would like fit it into this hole. That's, that's kind of the general approach to this. So if you're working in a more serious 3D scene, apart from just kit bashing something out and blocking it out, then it's, it's like imperative that you separate out the pieces. Right now, you can easily just select each one of the pieces and then you can assign materials to them. Let's say you want to assign gold, gold materials to these pieces, to the gold pieces. Then you can just click the pieces you want and you just very, very easily assign these pieces to it. In the other one, you have to select the individual polygons. So if you're now selecting in here, it's, it's, yeah, you just clicked it now and it looks like it's the same level of complexity, but it's really not because you can't do rule-based selection here, which means if, um, if, you have a, if you have a group with all the gold materials, you can just select all the gold materials and now you just assign a gold shader to it. If you are doing that same with polygons, you have to know exactly which polygons are supposed to be tagged with the gold material. Let's say you have like a 10,000 screws. You can't just keep selecting all of them by hand like this. You're going to be selecting the group or the collection, whatever it might be in your software, and then just assign a single material. And for production, you aren't even doing that. You're just doing it like 100% rule-based. You're doing this based on scripts where you have like a look file and in this you have it says model a has shader a to it so this is all 100 percent automatic if you start to fiddle here with different polygons and different material tags you're in for a world of pain this is also true when it comes to individual or like different materials on 
on uh, different models. Let's say you have one polygonal, uh, like you, you have one polygonal object, and this has two separate shaders. Like it's just broken up by by that. Then you are in for a lot of different pain. Yeah, one of the interesting arguments I've seen is that. Uh, well, you should just organize your scene properly from the beginning. Yeah, and that's that's totally a valid point, but that's not how it works in production, unfortunately. Like, you're going to be going between a lot of different departments. And when you go between different departments, maybe you get assets from another vendor, maybe it's scan-based. Uh, there's a lot of companies and a lot of vendors that just provide you with a model as is. It's not optimized for the specific company you're working in, so maybe they have a different way of grouping it. So there are a lot of instances especially when you're working in a production where you're going to have to ingest models and content from other vendors that you're going to have to clean up and fit to your pipeline now if you get a model like this obviously then you go in you split everything out you separate it then you name it correctly and then you can start applying your materials to it it just makes the process easier for everyone whether it's someone who picks it up in texturing where they don't have to make individual masks for each separate object. If it's a combined one, they can just have one shader, one UE per kind of material. Or if it's in rigging, any sort of organization just becomes a lot easier. Yeah, when it comes to specifically what you just did, you assigned gold gold materials to like a few faces. This information will, will 100% certainty be lost if you were to move this file to somebody else, unless you make a specific note that all these faces need this. It's also annoying because now you, you might select the wrong faces. Maybe you, you select too many or too few, and now you have rendering issues. But if in, but if you were to instead separate out the different pieces, you just say everything in this group gets this material, everything in this group gets that material. It it makes your life so much easier. Now, there's definitely cases where you can go ahead with this workflow, where maybe you're working on a kind of concept-like environment and you just want to quickly kit bash something together. You just assign materials willy-nilly to objects, stretch them out, place them in the scene. That's totally cool. You know, you're working with it and you know what it's going to be used for. But this becomes a real issue, not just for you if you're working on your own scenes, but also for others. Like if you're working in your scene in a scene by yourself and you're sort of like going through the production stages, you want to do everything from, from modeling to sculpting, texturing, shading, lighting, your life is going to be a lot easier by separating things out. One of the things we talked about before the starting this video was like, what about teeth and nails? And again, the same sort of principle applies. You should separate it out. You can make an argument for keeping nails, specifically nails, part of the sort of existing mesh. I would still separate it out because it just means you don't have to fiddle with masks, any sort of weird transitions from sort of like the nail bed to the nail. The same thing with the teeth. It allows you to get more realistic subsurface scattering if you have gum that sort of like has a cavity to it and you have the teeth inserted in the in the gum and up into the skull there. So there's just a lot of benefits to doing this and sort of like adhering to this workflow and making sure that everything is actually separated. It also makes rigging significantly easier. Let's say you, you have like a Ironman suit or something like this and it needs to transform. Now you can move each individual piece and it's incredibly easy. Like you can, you, since there were separate pieces, you were now just moving it in a component space. So, which means that you can go back and forth all the time. You can reset the rotation, scale, orientation, whatever it might be. But if you were to select an individual polygon and move that polygon around, there is no way to revert back to that. Like you can't, you can't rig effectively with that. The only way would be to do some crazy weight map yeah, maybe setup. you could do with wave maps or something. And that's but, just so painful. Come but again, like you want to, you want to keep it clean. That's the whole idea behind this. Yeah, if you were to rig this with weight maps, because <laughs> because you didn't separate out materials, unless you have a very good technical reason for that, that just makes it so much harder. So of course there are use cases uh, where you can keep things combined. Maybe you're doing a super low poly game. Everything is one mesh. All the verts are combined. There's no separate objects. Everything lives on the same texture map. You know, that's that's totally a, a, a valid reason as well. But as a general rule of thumb, if it's separate in real life, then separate it out in your 3D scene. I think that, that just about covers it. I mean, it's... We try not to overcomplicate this issue, but it is something that comes up so much. So we try to find a lot of things and a lot of use cases for why and why not. But when you really boil it down to the simplest thing, it is just separate out your objects.
So if you want to see more content like this in the future, more basic stuff where we talk about production flow, workflows, etc., um, leave a comment down below, like and subscribe and make sure to turn on notifications so you get notified every time we put out a new video. And if you're interested in professional training or 3D assets, 2D assets, 2D training, whatever it is, trying to advance your career within the CG visual effects or animation industry, make sure to pop over to the Flip Normals Marketplace and grab something from there.